Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. So today we are going to go through how to make your art more dimensional and give your art more depth or the illusion of more depth. In this video, I'll be breaking down form and tone and why they're important and why they're essential to giving your artwork life and dimension. So I think these two fundamentals are things that you should be constantly revisiting. So yes, this video is for beginners, but I think anybody out there who's intermediate, maybe you'll take a little tip or two for your process and it might help you problem solve a little bit quicker. If you want to learn how to make your art more 3D looking, more dimensional, give your art more depth, then keep on watching. But before we get into it, of course, I've got to thank my patrons for this video. This video is brought to you by a specific patron who is asking for tips on how to make their artwork more dimensional and give a lot more depth in their artwork. So this video is specifically for that person, but also this video is also an opportunity to teach my audience uh, a couple of tips and tricks here and there. So thank you so much to that particular patron for making this video happen happen. Also, if you want to support this channel and also get lots of art tips and tricks that are personalized to you, consider becoming a patron. Yeah. Okay, you guys, so today we are going to chat about form and tone. These are two elements in your fundamentals that maybe you've glossed over or you've heard about them in the past, but they are a little laborious and a little boring and not very flashy, especially compared to like color <laughs> and detail. So, you know, we're going to peel it back and just focus on these two elements, form and tone and define them and also chat about how to emphasize these things and how to correct these things. Let's start off and talk about form. So what is form? Form is the overall shape or silhouette of a subject matter. Form is defined by the outer contour of a subject matter or a silhouette. This can be sharp and geometric or fluid and soft and organic. So now that we've defined what form is, let's chat about why it's important. Form and silhouettes can basically make or break the illusion of making elements look 3D. The human eye defines and assesses objects by its shape. So when they look incorrect, we can recognize that really easily. And although we may not be able to assess why they look incorrect, the human eye and the human brain does, you know, assess them as looking not quite right. Of course, these rules can be broken, but uh, you need to know the rules before you can break them. So let's Let's chat about what a form can look like and how you can make elements look a little bit more dimensional and give them a lot more depth. Okay, so some examples of shapes to draw. So obviously these are cubes and spheres and rectangles, cylinders. These are your basic forms and silhouettes and shapes. Shapes make up everything that you draw. So learn to draw these in lots of different angles and lots of different lighting scenarios. By knowing and memorizing these shapes, you can then problem solve and draw any subject matter going forward. Everything that you look at, every object that you draw is made up of shapes. So once you understand and memorize these shapes, you'll be able to break down a subject matter and understand how to draw a subject matter like a face or a flower, animal. You'll be able to understand and draw those and problem solve a lot quicker if you know and memorize these shapes. So here is an example of a subject matter being broken down into shapes. You can see all the different varying shapes in this subject matter. And an exercise that you could do is if you're not quite understanding how uh, an item is made up of shapes, maybe take a couple of pictures and draw and outline where you think the shapes are making up and comprising a subject matter. It'll just help you really understand and break down how to draw something. So that's a little exercise and Tip that I recommend if you want to make things look a lot more dimensional and give your items a lot more depth. Another exercise I recommend is looking back at all the varying shapes that you've drawn and assess which are the most interesting angles and the most dynamic angles that give a lot of depth and just create things of interest and things that are a little bit more visually appealing. So you may assess that 
flat angles are a little rigid and maybe don't quite give the illusion of making things look super dimensional. This cube here might look a lot more interesting, you know, from a different kind of angle. So assess what shapes and angles work for you and now you can take that lesson and put that forward into a drawing or a painting in future. And finally, I just want to reiterate and really pound in that understanding and memorizing these forms really helps to problem solve later on. When you have a really good understanding of how subjects are broken down into shapes, it really helps the drawing process be a lot quicker and basically it just helps you problem solve and makes everything a lot more enjoyable in the future. Okay, now that we've covered form, let's chat about tone. So what is tone? Tone is the value of shade and light. So tone can be the lightness or a darkness of a color. So why is this important? Tone helps to create dimension and help the eye in assessing what the image is. So much like form, the human eye needs help to define a shape and tone can aid to enhance that shape. Tone and form work very well and cohesively to Together. If you are wanting to make your objects look a lot more dimensional, really focusing on your tones and forms together will really help aid and give that illusion of making things look a lot more three-dimensional. So how do you get good tones? Well, there's no simple or hack or trick. It's basically practice, but I do recommend practicing productively. So practice with a pencil and paper. I recommend getting a little set of pencils that have a variety of hardnesses. So some lights, pencils and some darker pencils. All of these varying tones will really help to sell the three-dimensional aspects of your artworks. Practicing in pencil really helps eliminate any other distractions like color or detail. It really forces you to just focus on the fundamentals. Like I mentioned before, I know fundamentals can be really laborious and they seem either boring or intimidating, but trust me with practice and just being a little bit more stricter with yourself, it really helps to push and really just make you a better artist. So moving on from the tools that help you to practice tone, let's look at some examples that have some in-depth and lots of varying tones to really help and identify an image. So here is the Emperor card that I have painted. By the way, this isn't a vlog if you missed that from last week. Here it is in black and white and you can see here that the tones are varied and pretty extreme. So the light in the background is quite light compared to the subject matter. And having these big jumps in tone really helps to identify a shape and go back to the form and helps the eye to clarify exactly what you're looking at. If you're wondering how to make your artwork pop a lot more, try looking at it in black and white often. This really helps to pick your colors and the values and the depth and tone that you should be really going for to help the eye define exactly what you're looking at. Okay, you guys, we are done with the video. I really hope you took a couple of things from here. Uh, let me know which tips and tricks you will implement in your work. And also, if you do use any of the exercises that I had mentioned in the video, make sure you tag me either on Twitter or Instagram at Zeke's Lunchbox. But if this video wasn't quite enough and you need more in-depth explanations on a couple of things, consider becoming a patron. Every month I have submissions where people submit their artworks and I give one-on-one -on -one training back to them on what they can improve with their artwork. And it's a great way for not only getting expert knowledge from me, but also in turn the Patreon page supports my art and my channel. Okay, you guys, that's it from me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, let's try and get to 30k before before the end of the year. Very ambitious. Share the video around and if you know anybody who wants to know more about the art process or get art inspiration, consider sharing the video with them. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye!